So when we think about the impact of the algal bloom on humans, there's three things I suggest we need to be thinking about. And that's because there's not just one algae species. The first thing that, um, uh, that I'd like to talk to you about is the impact of Karenia mikimotoi, which is the main uh, algal species that is, has been detected here in South Australia. That's the species that's causing that brownish discoloration in the water and the foaminess on some of the beaches that you may have seen. And it's also the species that's responsible for killing the marine life and the dead marine life being now washed up on the beaches that again, people have seen. That particular species of um, uh, algae, Karenia mikimotoi, is not actually toxic to humans. Now the second issue uh, is that um, during this um, uh, algal bloom, we are also picking up what is called a brevi toxin, which is caused by a completely different species of Karenia. That brevi toxin does have a toxic effect on humans, but it actually is not toxic to our marine life. That particular brevi toxin is um, found in what we call bivalves, and those are the shellfish that have two shells. For example, oysters, scallops, cockles, even razorfish, for example, they have the two uh, valves. And that's because those particular um, types of seafood are filter feeders and they accumulate things. Like oysters accumulate pearls, same sort of mechanism. Let's go back to the number one um, health problem that people have experienced and we've had people reporting to us in the health department and that is when they've walked along the beach or gone swimming, they have had this itchy skin, um, uh, itchy eyes, perhaps feeling like they're going to start coughing and that's due to the uh, Mikimoto, um, uh, Karenii Mikimoto algal fragments having broken up in the surf, coming out into the air atmosphere and then getting on people's skin. Or of course, if you've gone swimming, for example, um, you've had it on your skin. It can be irritating, but it's an irritant effect. And when you walk away from the area, especially if you wash that wa salt water off your skin, it completely disappears and there's no long-term complications. So that's the really good news. Sure, I absolutely agree. It is frustrating and annoying when you get those symptoms, but I wanna be really reassuring that they are transient, they go away and they don't cause long-term harm. Of course, I also uh, need to give some advice to people living along the beachfront. If it's um, a day when there's a, a breeze coming in from, you know, an offshore breeze coming in from the sea, then sometimes those little particles might be carried into your living room if you've got the door open or the window open. So we are recommending to people that do live on the seafront, um, if you're starting to get any symptoms and you've got that sea breeze coming in, to shut the uh, house up and not have that exposure. Now I said there were three things that uh, this algal bloom has done in terms of impacting us in terms of humans. And the last one is terribly important and that is mental health. Because clearly when you have this sort of thing hap happening to our beautiful environment in South Australia can be really stressful. Um, so in that instance, uh, I really recommend to people that they talk about how they're feeling to, to their support network and if they need to, to get professional uh, support for this. I'm also very pleased that our government is putting funding into community support programs and we will also have mental health support packages for some of the um, uh, producers of seafood, the fishermen and such like who have been impacted economically by this algal bloom. So the things to look out for when you're going to the beach is, you know, asking yourself, can I swim? Is have a good look at the water. If the water is very clear, there's no foaming at all, then chances are you will be absolutely fine and you won't get any of these symptoms at all. If the water is brown discoloration and there's a lot of foam, um, and there's pictures again uh, up on the website of what this would look like, then it's important that you say, maybe I shouldn't swim there because the chances are you may get some of those symptoms. Again, they will not cause you long-term harm, but it can be irritating. And who wants to have itchy skin and have to deal with that? Um, so our recommendation is don't swim when the water looks brown and there's foam along the, the beach line. 
our pets are a little bit the same as us. They will be impacted by that irritant effect of the um, little algal fragments breaking up. So if it's a very nice clear day and the sea looks a cr a pristine, clear, there's no foam, absolutely fine. Your dog should be absolutely fine. But you'll start to get symptoms yourself if there is some um, uh, uh, algae particles there and it's very rough and the waves are starting to come and break and you've got lots of wind blowing. Um, if you're starting to get your eyes watering and your skin feeling a bit itchy, your dog or your pet will presumably um, have the similar experience. So again, it's the same as for humans. If you see that foamy discoloration uh, and the brown discoloration in the water, it's probably one of those days when um, you might want to stay a little bit back from, from the sea edge so that your pet's also not exposed. But again, there is no toxin that is going to cause long-term damage to your pet. Um, and so I think I can be quite reassuring from that point of view. The other thing is, and I know when I take my dog to the beach and they go for a good run around, they like to sniff at things and really get, you know, their nose into, particularly if there's a smelly dead fish. Now, um, that could be another way that our little pets are getting themselves exposed. So um, be very cautious. If you, if you can't trust your pet to not stick their nose into the smelly dead fish, then have them on a leash just to be on the safe side. I just want to reiterate, it is absolutely safe to eat seafood purchased from either a um, seafood outlet, a fishmonger, a supermarket, or indeed a restaurant in, uh, where seafood has come from South Australia. We have a very, very rigorous testing procedure here in our state. It's done very frequently. And in fact, the food safety team sit within public health. We work very closely with primary industries to ensure that nothing that gets on a table that a South Australian has bought at a store uh, has any problems whatsoever. Of, we are giving some advice to people that go and self-collect and that is particularly um, to, to be careful of uh, bivalves which are the oysters, mussels, cockles, scallops but also abalone. Um, if you're self-collecting of course we're not testing brevitoxin and what you're self-collecting and those are the uh, seafood where brevitoxin can be problematic but anything that you purchase from any seafood outlet um, the commercial seafood outlet from the supermarket from a restaurant is perfectly safe and personally I am enjoying eating all of those things myself. I've um, got oysters in my fridge. I'm going to have whiting tonight. I'm, I'm also looking forward to having some salt and pepper squid on the weekend.